Hello my darlings, how are you doing? Today we're gonna be getting back into my Life Today tutorial series where I teach you how to create your own VTuber model and for this we're gonna be looking into how to import your PSD into Life Today set it up so it's all good and ready to be rigged this is one of the more boring parts of the process but it's necessary to get to the good part so let's get right into it Alright, so we're in Life Today and the first step is really really simple you're just going to open the folder where you have your psc and you're literally just gonna drag and drop into life today and it's gonna import here but we're gonna have to fix some things you'll see in a minute yep there we go see we lost all our masks our, our all the clipping gone so I'll show you how to redo them in Life Today or one, and then you can apply it to the rest. It's the same process. So let's see here with the mouth, as you can see. Yep, there's the mouth layer. So you're just going to go into the layer that's going to mask the others, and you're going to the inspector tab right here. And you see that every layer has a name and an id so with the names you can have like identical names like layers with the same name but every layer needs a different id so if your layer is named something that has no spaces in it uh, and if it has no duplicates it's the id is going to be something very similar Otherwise, if it has a space, it's just going to name it like art mesh and a number, which is fine. The names are mostly just for, you know, self-organization. So I don't bother changing them. Some people do. It's, you know, your preference. Uh, I'll just leave it as it is, as long as the names are correct. Uh, it's enough for me. So I'll just copy the ID of the layer. And then I'll come to the, all the layers that are going to be masked by the mouth. And then with shift, you're gonna come here, select all these layers that are going to be masked. And right here on clipping ID, we're just gonna paste that ID of the mouth. And there you go. There is your mask back together. So we're gonna turn that off for now. And I'll just fast forward as I do the other ones. Now, there will be moments where you have one layer that will be masked by two so in this case it's usually the shadow of the skirt with the legs so you have two legs that are going to mask this shadow layer so the process is really simple uh, instead of having only one layer in the clipping id space you're going to have to so you're just going to copy first id paste it there and it works as intended and then you're going to the other leg copying that and then you're gonna keep that id there on the shadow just put a comma there and paste the other one so you have a list of all the layers that are going to mask one single layer and it works pretty well as you can see we'll be able to move the shadow of the skirt with the skirt and it will still be masked by both legs and then you can also move the leg here from side to side works perfectly um so this is the masks done but there is one last thing we need to do before we actually set up the art meshes which is as you can see the multiply layers that we set up in photoshop or clip studio they translated to life to d fairly well so if you go into the inspector you can see they are set to multiply 
but because uh, Life 2D's additive mode is slightly different from Photoshop's and Clip Studio's additive, uh, you're going to have to set them up again. So if you have any highlights, you just go here and set them to additive and they're back to their glowing former selves. And we should be good to go and get some art matches done. Alright, so I just went ahead and saved my file. And before we uh, begin to generating our art meshes, I want to show you why we do it. And if you're not familiar with any 3D programs out there, or even Life 2D, the way that this shows up and that we move it, is by having an art mesh. So you can see those gray little points here. This is the automatic art mesh that comes with the drawing when we import it. But if you try to move it, you can see that there are some problems, right? This does not have enough points for any movement that we do here. We need more points. So the way that we're going to do this, we could go by hand, but that would be just a lot of time. So what we're gonna do is just hit Ctrl A to get all of our layers selected. And we're gonna hit this button right here, Automatic Mesh Generator. And what that's going to do is automatically generate an art mesh so we can have a base to start working on. So you have a couple of presets here that come with life 2 I think the best one of the default ones is the standard just because it's not too heavy of a mesh and it's fairly okay but I have my own custom numbers that you were free to copy and as soon as you select something in the list it's going to generate it so let's just give it a minute now we have all these points to work with and this background should not be here we don't need a background anymore delete that okay so now we have all the points that we needed and if you want to just copy my preset feel free i've just enlarged it for you right here and now that we have these basic points we can start, you know, clearing up the problem parts. There will be some problem parts. Uh, the AI is not perfect, so you're just going to have to come in and check every single layer to see if that's what you need, if you need to change anything. So right here, we have the hair. And personally, I think the hair is the part that needs the most attention just because of how much he moves. The face in general is where most of your points are gonna be concentrated at. So, just for the hair itself, you can see here, if you double click, you can go into the edit mode. And if you bring up your tool details tab, you have all your tools to change this mesh. So you, can, you have your selecting tools. If you're okay with your drawing software you'll be fairly in tune with these already but then you have your point editing tools which is adding deleting you have a brush tool if you hold b you can change the size of your brushes and then we have this drawing tool which will be very good for the eyes and the mouth later i'll show you but for the hair itself, as we can see right here, this match extends beyond what the art is, and that's alright. I just think it's too far away, so we're gonna come in here. You have your auto mesh in here as well. So we're just gonna come in here and make this outside margin a bit smaller. I think this is fairly good enough room to breathe 
and as you can see we have our problems here too many points adding up to one single point this is not good skewed points that we can move a bit so i'm just gonna fast forward as i clean this up and then when i'm done you can see what we're looking for to have in an art mesh Alright, so this is the art mesh that we're looking for. As you can see, the points are very well spread. So they are roughly the same distance in between each other. And the pattern that we're looking for is this zigzag thing going down this strand of hair, as you can see. If you have any blue lines like this, you can just hit auto connect and they will automatically connect to the nearest point. And this much is pretty good. It's not too detailed, which you don't want it to, you don't want it to be too heavy on our computer, but it's going to give us enough flexibility to deform this strand of hair for physics later. So we're just gonna hit this button up here and this art mesh is done. Now a cool little trick that we can do because this character from the get-go was made thinking about symmetry. So remember when we use the symmetry tool and we put the model in the perfect center of the canvas? Yeah, this is why. Because this strand of hair is perfectly symmetrical and it looks the same as the other strand of hair, we can go ahead and copy and paste it. And if you go into the options, you can reflect it horizontally and ta-da! The other one is done. You don't need to do the work twice. Even if you do have like a slightly different uh, drawing here but the outline is the same you can just copy the art mesh without copying the art and the way we're gonna do it let me show you how it goes so in here we have different art right this is how we imported it we can just hit ctrl c on the art that we have done already we're going to the other one, going to the double click so we can edit it, delete everything, and then just paste it. And it's going to paste just the art mesh. So with the selection tool, you can come here and reflect it. And because this is symmetrical and in the center, the art mesh will also be perfectly placed. So this is less work. Now although the drawing is different, the art mesh is the same, so if you need to paste any animation into this art mesh, you can copy and paste it further ahead. But we're not gonna be doing this for this one, we will just copy the left side to the right side and there is a reason for it let me just save it first because of the way life 2d works at the end of your rig you're going to generate a texture atlas so this isn't important yet we can go back but this is how life 2d stores all your art and as you can see it has two of every single thing that is flipped, that is perfectly symmetrical and we flipped. You 
because through life today it's different art but we know that we can just you know if we copied and pasted it and flipped it it would be the same so what we can do to save space in this atlas and optimize our model is if we do have one side that is perfectly identical to the other if you copy and paste it with the art and reflect it just delete the one that you're not using and then we're gonna go into the atlas again and you will see that we only have one piece of the hair right here and no other so this frees up space for us that we can use to make this model more high definition with the same amount of space in this PNG. This is why symmetrical characters are much more lighter to work with. You can copy and paste a lot of things and it's much less work and much less stressful to process in the tracking software later. So this is basically all that you need to start working on the other things. I will only show you the one last trick that I like to use for lines in general. So for example, this part of the eye or the line of the lips or even the eyebrows. I'll show you on the eyebrows actually. Or the art meshes what we have is this last tool it's a new tool that I really love because you can draw a line and if you have an art mesh that is basically like a thick line you can just generate this art mesh so much easier you can just like fiddle with it a bit I like to give it as much points as needed to make like a square shape repeating like this, like a low angle in this case. But yeah, and then you can also come in here oop, with control and make it thinner or make it thicker. And this is how you can quickly generate any meshes for any lines in your artwork. You just come here to confirm and bam, you have your art mesh ready for your eyebrow. And that's what we're gonna be doing for all of the rest of the model. I'll just put it in a time-lapse for you and I hope to see you on the next one.